Next up, Bosch hammer. That's dangerous for a start. Shouldn't be locking on. Two, that's a problem because that's not even in rotation mode. She's on hammer, that's why she's locking on. So this is actually, this has been taken off and not installed again properly. On top of that, no hammer. Looking like a service. Now this is the same one that the actual striker can get jammed up. Just want to see, yeah. You can just change the O-rings on the piston and the striker, and that will get this hammering again. But, seeing as somebody's had this off, and there is an oil leak, that top seal will have to be replaced. That's not expensive, but it adds to the cost. Plus, it needs a set of brushes. Nothing left of them things. It's just about to stop as well. So that's an extra 20 euro. It's actually better off just putting a full service kit onto this here machine. So we'll do a Full strip down, clean it all down, fix it all up, put a new service kit onto it, and rebuild it. That should get this working perfectly again. Stuff. I don't know if a heat pump help. Actually, barely any grease left in this anyway. Very brown. Do you think there's rust on it?
Now, separate rubber mallet. Also change this oil seal down on here. See as we're totally stopping this apart. She's worn in, but she's not worn out. That bearing's gone. A wee bit of an oil leak. Everything else looks okay. Also, these two seals as well. There's a felt sleeve and a rubber lip seal and also replace them they're actually not in the service kit either nor is this seal down in here to buy them separately and that is the problem striker is jammed up inside of here see the wee dents where she's been locked onto the tool holder that's gone that's the main problem M2 o-rings there's also a striker pin inside of this or the impact bolt which is all up in here so that has to come out as well because there's seals in the service kit for that bolt so we're going to have to replace them as well to get it out Four holes on the edge of the tool holder here, two high ones, two low ones. There's a wee C clip on the low one, you can just see the edge of it. Get a wee screwdriver, get on, prise it up. Sometimes they spring back, so go to the other one. Prise that one up. Go back to this one. Get that up. So now it's just sitting high down inside. So you need to get something in there now to hook it and pull it out. We flat screwdriver. We notch cut out. Works perfectly. Put it on. Hook on the seat clip. Pull it out. So that's what you have inside. Steel washer that the C-clip sits on top of. Black rubberized ring. This is your striker bolt. That's her in pieces. Now for the slow bit. Actually washing everything down. Cleaning it all out and drying it again. And this Bosch oil, it is actually an oil, torture to clean it. You can wash the actual surface bit off, but it leaves behind a oil greasy residue. It's very difficult to clean it. So to get these bits clean, I'll actually give them a second wash on thinners, paint thinners. That'll actually get off all the grease. It's good for keeping the machine running, but it's a torture when it comes to cleaning the thing down. Get this cleaned. So that's it clean. 
as you can see it's just not fully clean a lot of thinners as well and that just cuts through the last bit of grease and leaves it fully cleaned out if you are using that do so at your own peril because it is nasty stuff Sure you've got a mask on anyway. Much better. Just have to do the same for every other thing. See how square that o-ring is now, totally worn out. This is the holding device for your pins. Hold the actual chisel into the tool holder on your machine. Just make sure them two edges there aren't broken away. If they break off, you have to replace that. Otherwise the chisel will get locked in the tool. And this is an X seal. It's not an O-ring. square with an X profile to it. That's also in the service kit. Get rid of that old one. Has really come on useful. A little greasy residue just sticks to the plastic. Thunners cut right through it.
to be warned. Thunder, thunders, said, you know, thunders are seriously carcinogenic. You really do not want to be breathing this stuff on. Once you get close enough to it, you can smell how bad it is. Okay, that's us. All washed out, ready to go. This is what you need for your service. This is the service kit, or wear and tear parts as it's called. That's your part number. This is just about everything. All your o-rings and seals and your brushes, all inside of this. this is the service kit for this machine to get it hammering again. Not a bad price either. That kit there costs about 40 euro. To put that into context, the brushes alone, if you just wanted to change the brushes, cost 21 euro. This red seal, your top plate, that's a tenner to buy on its own. So that's 31 euro just for them two parts. You're getting a whole service kit for 40. But if you are doing a service on this machine and you're changing everything, it doesn't include everything. If you want this mount to bother, you're also going to want to change the bearings on your motor. Oil seal for your housing, just in case it fails. And the oil seal for the front, it's a felt and a lip seal. So those extra parts there cost about 32 euro. 40, 40 for the service kit, 32 for the rest of them. Then you also have your oil to put into here as well, cost about 10 or 15. So all in all, if you're doing a full service on this thing, it starts to get a wee bit pricey, but still a lot cheaper than buying a new one at 800 euro. So I'll get this all set up first, get it all ready to go before we start rebuilding it. First thing, replace these. Easiest way to do it, stick it on a vise and expand the metal with a blue torch. Don't panic if it catches fire, it'll be alright. Give it a wee twist, pull them clean out. Get rid of the excess grease underneath. Try not to burn yourself. Then your lip seal goes on first, facing down. And your felt seal on top. Let we press on and let it cool. Next, we'll tackle the bearing on the armature. This one actually isn't all that bad, but we'll change it anyway. You're going to need a splitter to grab it and press it out on the bearing press. The armature and the bottom bearing just pushes on. Next thing is your housing. This oil seal, this has to go on now. Again, a little bit of heat makes it easier. Fill it with a lip facing up. Press it down, it should be flush. Make sure your C clip is fully engaged. And that's that bit ready. And your front seal. Should now be cool enough. Don't need that. Now, what do we get on the service pack? Kit 
cap for the front this is the piece I just threw away that's just a seal for down on here your red seal for the top cover there are your main hammer points piston striker o-ring and this is your impact bolt That's the new C clip for inside your hammer pipe and your tool retainers. Not all service kits come with these, this one does. So we'll place them. That's the C clip for the top of your hammer pipe, holding on your holding on your sleeve assembly. And that's the washer for inside the hammer pipe just behind your striker bolt and obviously your brushes and just in case you don't know what you're doing comes a wee breakdown diagram also shows you shows you where all the parts go first off get your seal for your top cover If you aren't servicing this thing fully, you're just doing a quick repair job, changing these two o-rings to get it hammering again, because the rest of the hammer is in good condition. Don't pull out that seal. Once you pull it out, it'll actually stretch a wee bit and expand. That will not go on properly. It'll kink every time you try to put it back in, because it'll have gotten longer. And that kink will cause an oil leak. Price of that thing is 11 euro. So if you're also changing these o-rings, plus this, you're nearly better off buying a full service kit. It's nice and cheap just to replace them two on their own. But if you don't need to take this out, leave it alone. This is the selector for your mode. All it is, it's just a wee offset cam. Just slides this up and down. that ready looks like a lot of stuff but once you actually break it down with the small groups of components there's not an awful lot on it everything has its job and everything has its place It's just sitting down flush all the way. And there's only two screws holding it on. Also, if you're doing this, whenever you start off, just check the teeth on your armature. If they're at all worn, don't go putting a service kit onto it. Even if you service it, it's still going to be loud and geary. And if this is worn, this meshing gear will be worn as well. If you needed to replace them too, it wouldn't be worth fixing the machine. You're better off just doing a quick, simple service, getting the thing hammered again, and that's it. But if it's like this one, barely a mark on it, it's well worth putting a full service onto it.
going to clamp this on tight. Just hold the teeth in a vise, tighten up that nut. That's that. That is your automatic trigger lock whenever you're on hammer only mode, no rotation. This allows the trigger to lock and stay in the arm position. them nice and tight. Two brushes, one is one lead, one is two. One of the two leads goes onto this here wee small connector. We sense wire switches on a light up here, the service light, whenever the brushes run down too far. It's not doing anything else. It's only just relaying a wee signal. And these also have a little spring and pin built into them as well. So even if you ignore the light. They'll pop and stop the machine anyway, once they wear down so far. In the back end. Clips on back here, drops down. I should give you the space to close this. I just want to get the base and everything onto this so I'm not banging them brush holders about. The other side for your sense wire. It's on there. And you have two leads. Just feed on to the brush holders. I don't like to leave a lead like that. Obviously, that's not connected to the cable clamp. That's at risk of being pulled out. I'll just go and shorten that and rewire that on again. Nice wee short leads and ferrules as well. Never forget this plate as well because like the other Bosch hammers this actually presses on the armature, pushes this bearing down, and what clears the fan and the air deflector inside. If you run this machine without this plate, you risk the fan and the air deflector rubbing together, melting and binding up.
right, that's the bottom half done. Just put a heavy grease on first. Steel washer. Needle bearings. Steel bush. Clutch. Press this because I have a lot of grease on. And your crank. That's that section ready. Now for just all those wee fiddly bits. Separate everything out if you want. Just make it a wee bit easier for yourself. All that. It's all for the end, for the tool holder side of things. That's the only parts we're focusing on now. Before I forget. Seal up inside of here. We want to focus on the tool holder and the actual striker. Get this back together. Good help on a grease down inside the tool holder. The hammer pipe, as this side is. Drop that on. This flat edge o ring. Actually, a damper. Tap that down. And the steel washer. This open C-clip holds it all down when you're installing. See there's two high and two low holes, same as when we're taking it off. Make sure the open end is at one of the high holes. So the two lower holes are here and here. So if you ever have to take this out again, if you're doing another service, it's easy to take out. If you have it sitting like this, you'll have no leverage to prise this up. It'll be very difficult to take out. Push it on and down. Then take your actual hammer without the o-ring, put it in upside down. You can use that to seat that C-clip all the way down. Then we tap at the place. Hear the tone change. You can also check you can check to make sure it's installed correctly also. You should be able to see it just below the halfway mark on this hole. I'll check it on both sides as well. That's it on correctly. Take your hammer out. That's your tool holder ready to go. Another dab of grease on there. And for the rest, steel washer, plastic sleeve. Then your wee small spring, big one. 
actually for the tool holder. The narrow one was on there. And a second washer then over the top. And this will be going on as well. This is on the front side. That's your tow holder assembly ready to go. That's also the tow holder end. This is all we have left now. A lot of hammers use the same o ring on the striker and the piston. This Bosch one uses two different ones. Black one, the striker or the hammer, and green one on the piston. Now, rotation gear, this bevel gear, teeth faces back towards the handle. This is the selector gear. This faces forward towards the front. In between them you have two shims. You might have two shims, you might have one, you might have three. Just put back in whatever came out. Put a bit of grease in between them just for initial startup. And this sits in between the two. So that's the way you want it. This middle ring is just your selector. Once you sit in like this, she's on rotation mode. Once she's sitting over on this one only, she's on the chisel rotate mode where you can just turn the chisel by hand for hammer only. Whenever she goes over the full way, she locks against this part of the gear housing and locks the chisel on hammer only and it doesn't rotate. So you install this face to the back, it's meshing onto the clutch. This smaller one faces the front. Just drop it all down. Line up your piston. Drop these into place. Push down your piston. Just keep this gear facing back the way. goes forward now, two shims can drop out and file up your tool holder as you're putting it on. So next, put in your striker, that on there, little dab of grease, marry the two up. Give it a wee twist and a push as you're going on. It's a very tight fit. You can again give it a bit of heat. The aluminium takes the heat away very quickly so you'll not burn yourself too handy. Push it on. Wash your plate is on first and your C clip. Sure that's well located on until it snaps into place. And lastly, when you're sure you've everything done and in place and correct, then put on your oil. Don't put it on until you're absolutely sure. It's 50 ml of oil if you're cleaning it out, 
I don't know if you're doing a full strut and service like I just did, put on 60. Now match up your mode. Selectors in the middle position. So tool holder turns freely. Put your selector in the same position. Drop this arm over this gear. You'll know you're right. If you change your mode, that changes the way the tool holder moves. That's it. left hand first, you hear it click, then tighten it down. Put you back into the original thread so that you don't cross thread these screws. So trust me, if you cross thread them, it's a pain. Final two screws just holds on the top half of the handle. Last wee piece now is your tool holder. Put a bit of grease on for your paws, for your two retainers. It's a plastic ring first, then the spring, your holder, and you actually hook on down on here. That hook that allows you to pull these holders down so you can let the chisel out. So if that tool holder breaks and if they're not hooking on, whenever you put a chisel on, it won't come back out again. So I've got to dismantle this to get the chisel out. Your new C clip. Make sure that's located on properly. Just put your handle on now when it's easier. And your sleeve and your end cap. That should be her ready to go. Put it on. Sounds good. That's her. She's locking on in the hammer position. You should be switching off on the rotation. Perfect. Test the hammer. That's it lads, one Bosch Hammer GBH 5 stroke 40 DE with a full strip down and service. All fixed up, 
ready to go, beating like new again. Now there were shocks and surprises me when people ask, is repairing or servicing a hammer like this even worth it? That's, I'm amazed that people even need to ask it to be honest. That hammer to buy costs about 800 euro. To do a service like this costs about 140. So there's a massive price difference on actual buying a hammer and servicing it. 140 euro is well worth it for a hammer like this here. This basically is now giving the hammer a second life. Working away perfectly, everything's running as it should. Motor's good, hammer's perfect, hammer and like new. You yeah, service a hammer like this, there's no need to go and buy a new one. This will serve you now for another couple of years till either the motor packs in or the seals and o rings wear out inside again, like they did on this one. So, this thing is a 2008 machine. So, that's done 15 years of work and now it needed a service. I could easily do another 15 years again before it needs another service, depending obviously on how much it's used and abused. It's not unusual to get a Bosch hammer like this and that's already had four or five different services. That's four or five brand new hammers you haven't had to buy. You've got all that time out of just one machine. So yeah, doing this kind of work to a Bosch hammer or a Makita or any of the main brands, very much worth it. Anyway lads, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. One other question to ask, I keep getting asked to do tool review videos. Generally, they're on cheaper brand stuff, mainly out of China and that. Most of the stuff when I get asked or get sent stuff, I don't really do a video on it, unless it's something worth looking at. But let me know in the comments here, do you actually want to see review videos like that? See what's on the market or just leave them out completely? I'll let you just decide lads. Anyway lads, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it. Give us a wee like and a follow at the bottom if you're enjoying the videos. Cheers.